on va attaquer. Donc, je, je vous présente très rapidement euh, Christophe et Jonas. Euh, et avant même de les présenter, je vais vous signaler que la conférence et les discussions, puisqu'il s'agit beaucoup de, de discussions entre nous et avec eux, va, va se passer en anglais. Donc s'il y a des gens qui ne sont pas anglophones dans l'Assemblée, euh, vous pouvez demander à vos voisins de vous traduire. Voilà. <rire> euh, donc, Christophe Ziegert, qui est ingénieur, euh, qui vit à Berlin, euh, et pour euh, quelques jours à l'école d'architecture, pour une formation euh, qui se passe à Cratère. Donc on a saisi l'occasion pour le, lui demander de faire une conférence avec Johannes Ritterer, qui, est, euh, qui travaille en Suède, qui est allemand aussi, mais qui travaille en Suède. Tous les deux travaillent sur la terre crue. Euh, voilà, je pense qu'ils vont se présenter euh, et présenter leurs activités un petit peu plus euh, chacun. Et maintenant que j'ai dit les premiers mots en français, I will switch to English. Um, so, as I said, we will exchange with you. So, first step, you will present shortly your, your activities and then start the discussion with some questions and uh, pictures to support these questions. So, maybe we can start right now if everything is okay. So, I'll let you start. Thank you again, uh, Gregoire, and the whole Qatar ENSAC team. It's really a big pleasure for us to stay here. And uh, I hope you have a nice evening together. That's not an evening where we show you all of our activities, all of our projects. This will be a discussion where uh, we show very selected slides and we will try to come a little bit in discussion about uh, these special things what you can see on these slides. And um, maybe this is not only a discussion between Grégoire and us, maybe it's a discussion of all of us to special uh, things about earthen buildings and earthen building materials. Um, we will start with a very small introduction um, from myself, um, Christoph Ziegert, and later Johannes. He will follow. Um, so um, I come from uh, Berlin, Germany, uh, from uh, Ziegert Rösfraktale Architect Engineers. I'm Christoph Ziegert, one of the heads from this company, one of the uh, directors. And we are an office of uh, 25 architects and engineers specialized in earthen buildings. And we build, we have projects all over the world in different uh, countries, continents, and especially in different uh, circumstances. So uh, developing countries, um, as well as uh, high-end clients in the uh, in our what we call normal European world, world. and uh, we um, have also in our uh, office our own lab, um, with special machines, especially for earth and building. So it's a little bit like um, here in Krater, uh, not so completed, of course, but we have the most important things for uh, <coughs> the tests. We think we uh, they are necessary. Um, we, um, we are an office for sustainable buildings. So what you can't do with earth, <laughs> Earth is our favorite, of course, but, but uh, such things we can't do with Earth. And, uh, and then we take uh, wood as much as possible and combine it then, um, uh, this is an industrial and office building, combine it then with Earth where it is possible and where it's, um, it's uh, useful, like 
here in this uh, office area from this uh, industrial building, all the plasters are earthen plasters. And we are we work in also with the UNESCO in World Heritage Areas, uh, like here in Jordan, uh, where we rebuild uh, natural stone and earth mortar masonry. Um, and we work um, also in the Arab region, um, especially in uh, Qatar and United Arab Emirates. So, uh, we have all different clients. We have the clients you see here and also the poorest people um, of the world you can imagine. And this gap or this whole field between both, that's the interesting thing uh, for us as um, office. <clears throat> My name is Johannes. Um, I'm born in Germany. I'm a trained uh, carpenter. And after uh, quite long travel, I settled down in Sweden. And that's where I started with clay. So I'm a genuine Swedish clay builder. Um, I, uh, after that, I, uh, uh, I became interested in oven, uh, mass oven. And I uh, learned building mass ovens in, uh, in a Finnish uh, constructor. And um, so I'm, and I have a master degree in oven building. So I'm also a Finnish uh, master of of uh, oven building. And these are my two areas I work I work in. Um, my building, uh, what I build is usually a little bit smaller than what you saw uh, from Christoph. I um, uh, work mostly in Scandinavia, also traveling a little bit in Europe and working here and there. And um, I'm very interested in, in, in developing or just uh, collecting knowledge and, and pass it on forward. Let's say other schools, I think it's very important that what we learn, we should pass on uh, as generous as uh, possible. Um, uh, but to tell you the truth, I almost got uh, a week ago with some kind of panic and I said, oh shit, I don't have anything to tell you. I don't know, I don't know what I should tell you. And maybe you know everything already or Christoph will tell it. And well, then I was thinking, wh what is it, um, what is it what I could tell you? And I was thinking of my, my little son, he's only 13 months, and he uh, is just discovering the world. And uh, he sees something interesting, he wants to go there, he falls down, he goes there anyway. And I like that picture a lot because I think we can learn something from it. We can learn um, to discover something. And it's worth to fall down on the way there. So maybe we fail. Maybe uh, the mix that we make doesn't work. It doesn't matter. It falls down the wall and we learn something and we just go up again and we try again. And that I would like to show with some of my work tonight, this evening, that where is the border, what is possible with earth as earth and clay as the dominant material. Um, and that means I must be prepared to make mistakes, to go too far and say, it's not working, okay, half step back, I try again. Um, and this is a little bit difficult because I don't like to make mistakes, really. So, so I want to show you some pictures of my work where we really try to go close to what we think the border is of possibility. And maybe it's not the border. Maybe you know, oh, you can do much better. You can go further. Or maybe you think, oh, this is way far out. This is not possible. Um, the interesting thing is with, with Christoph and me, we agree on many things. So it's a little bit boring, I think. But we have a very different approach to meet material. I don't have possibility to test, and I don't have the patience to do it. I like to try it, but I don't, don't have a laboratory or anything like that. So 
So we will see quite different approach to, to the building material play in Earth. But I would say we, we both have a very strong passion for it. And that's what I like most. <laughs> so let's start with the uh, first thing. So we will, uh, uh, we will speak about approach and we will speak about what is the uh, developing in the earthen, uh, uh, earthen building scene. Um, uh, yeah, closer. Okay. So, what happens in Germany? Um, in Germany, earthen materials at the moment are uh, much better accepted then uh, some uh, is much better <laughs> better <laughs> accepted some uh, 10 20 years ago and the earthen materials are reached now the most important buildings um, of Germany not the uh, church of Cologne but um, uh, like in my picture but uh, this uh, Slides are pictures from the um, um, Columba Museum from the architect Peter Zumthor in uh, Cologne. And this was one of the most important new museums buildings in Germany in the last years. And all surfaces are uh, covered with a very thin um, earth plaster. And uh, Peter Zumthor selected different plasters. He made mock-ups two years, different materials, gypsum, uh, lime plaster, cement plasters. And then, after two years, he decided, Peter Zumthor, uh, this grayish earth plaster is my favorite surface from uh, my museum. And all of the museum is covered with this two millimeters of clay plasters. Um, and um, a joke from the producer of this plaster, Playtech, is that um, since we produce uh, clay plaster which looks like concrete, <laughs> it's, he have different colors but also gray, uh, now the material is, is accepted by the architect. So, uh, because it's now gray like concrete. Um, and maybe we can come in discussion about the, um, um, the what we want to reach. We, we are now on the highest level what we can reach in Germany in the, the best buildings, uh, ministries, churches, museums were built in, uh, in earth. But as a final layer, as a very nice aesthetic final surface, two millimeters. <laughs> so is this our aim or um, what we want to uh, only surface or more? And that's the question. Um, <laughs> I, you don't expect to learn a lot about clay building in, in Sweden, right? You, sh you should move to, to, to France or maybe Germany now. Um, so I was very surprised to discover that uh, Scandinavia has a quite rich uh, culture uh, of clay building, N not as much as like here in France, but quite some. And um, this is one of the Best examples, uh, a grain storage built 1844, never has been protected by a plaster. This is uh, like adobe, you would call it, earth blocks, unburned. It's painted red one, one time, but the red color has no real protection. There's no real protection. It's two and a half story high. It's on a, on a, on a close to a lake. It's very windy. The weather is quite harsh. It worked since 1844 with extremely bad maintenance. 
there are some damages because the roof was not so good. So my question is, um, where the next picture? Um, uh, w how well can we use clay on the outside in a climate like in Scandinavia with very hard, uh, with very cold winters and, and hard weather? So here, yeah, this is a church. It's a church by the built by the uh, anthroposophic uh, community uh, in Jarna, south of Stockholm. It's uh, a lot of ideal work in here, of course, since it's a church. They are very poor. And it's made of uh, lightweight blocks on the outside and clay plaster. Uh, seven meters high. Uh, the, the foundation is extremely low. The roof looks very funny, not very functional. And, uh, and this is uh, a not stabilized uh, clay plaster. It's uh, clay, sand, straw, and a lot of cow shit. Um, and it works quite well now for 10 years almost. Looks very good. And um, I just want to say, uh, is this, has this been a border? Say, because people said it's not possible, so we say, okay, let's try at least. So we tried, and we are very successful with this one here. So this is a typical example, I think. Oh, here we moved the border. Uh, also outside the uh, chimney, we use clay mortar in the chimney. Um, chimney is not plastered later, so it is exposed. Chimney is very uh, stressed uh, part of a building. It's uh, hot and cold and smoke and 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 rain and it's freezing and it's wet and it's uh, water, everything at the same time sometimes. So we have discovered that clay is a fantastic clay mortar. Um, material to combine with, with bricks in in a chimney outside. Um, this is now outside too. We we mix clay plaster outside, even so we're going now to plaster on the inside of this house. But it's minus 10 degrees. Uh, Every, when I started, everybody told me, oh, well, clay is, is seasonal work. Don't work with it when it's too cold. And um, here, they really wanted to move in. Um, and I said, okay, let's try. So we, we work by, in, in, during the day, minus 10 degree, and it works. We, get, we got a good mixture. We got it inside quite fast. And then inside, we could control the temperature and the drying process quite well. Um, even here, um, we moved the border. Yep. So I think uh, I think there are two. Okay, my eins zurück. There are uh, two question at the moment, and if there are no interest to discuss, we go to the next one. Eins weiter und zurück. The first question is, uh, uh, we, we, maybe we need the small surface layer of amazing, nice uh, clay plasters to uh, get a higher acceptance by uh, the normal architects. This is uh, one question from my side. And your question is, is it a... Uh, the risk you can hold on your shoulders uh, that you try something like that uh, to use the material uh, in an area what it's uh, a big a big big um, yeah so a big stress for the earth plasters in this case here God is my customer so he's very uh, forgiving so the church, I thought, was a good beginning. Okay, so um, does anybody have something to say about the, the questions or the pictures? Yes. 
do you have the feeling that it is more the craftsmen that take the risk than the architects? I think, um, I think it's a, a risk of uh, both um, architects and craftsmen because uh, architect design this and uh, the engineer calculate this and uh, he have the guarantee for the durability also from surfaces, both of them architects and engineers, and the craftsmen do, if he use material that is not usable for such, uh, uh, such surface um, layer, then he's also um, uh, responsible for his work, and it's a big, it's a big risk, and the risk is okay or not, um, we, did, we as office, uh, uh, we don't use earth materials outside. Yeah, just for the mic. <laughs> Some other remarks or things to say? If nobody reacts, maybe um, uh, I, I would have something to say. <laughs> um, it looks like Architects consider, well, architects and common people consider Earth as being fragile. Maybe that's why it comes in big buildings in very thin and precious um, surface treatment. But what uh, Johannes shows is that actually it's not such a fragile material by implementing in, in Hard climates and with uh, outside without protection, or at least it seems. Um, in German, it is not so um, the the fret, uh, that's, uh, that the material is so fragile. That's not so the reason. The reason is uh, the costs. Uh, are the costs the costs are too high in solid earth techniques? So for the cost for a thin layer of earth and plaster uh, in a high quality, it's acceptable for the clients. Um, uh, but if you would have behind in, uh, in solid um, 25 centimeters earth block walls it, or rammed earth walls or something like that, it will be much more expensive like um, uh, like the concrete wall behind this plaster, and this is um, uh, in uh, much more buildings the reason why uh, they reduce the original approach. Let's build uh, earth and completely earth house. They reduce it back to a two millimeters layer. Not in this case, but in other case we have this. They reduces down, down, down to, to a two millimeters layer on the end. So that's, um, that's heavy sometimes for us. I, um, in my work, I have uh, usually discussed with, uh, uh, with the customer about aging and maintenance. Because if I have the feeling that the customer cannot accept a, a change of the surface, which we, let's say uh, aging, um, I don't want to do this. So I, I prepare my my customer quite well of, I can do clay plaster if you want. I can do it good. I am fairly sure it will hold at least uh, 10 years or more, probably more. Um, the oldest examples I did is now 15 years and very good, looks still very good. Um, but the, the, the surface is changing through the weather. Mm. So I have this discussion. The costs are almost low because I use the, the local clay and local material. So the cost is not the issue in my case. I, I, well, I, in France, I, I see another thing that the people like uh, architects. I speak about architects. 
uh, they, they, they see somewhere Pizé, and they want to make Pizé. Then they come to our, to us professionals, and they say, okay, I want to use Pizé on this house. And then after some time, they see it's expensive, and then they make no us at all. We know, for everybody perhaps not, but we know that earth plaster of one, two centimeters has real good use for humidity, gestion de humidity, and, and, and huh? indoor, indoor. I speak about indoor. And that's what I don't understand, because they, they come, they, they want to make big walls with pizé, then they say it's too expensive, and then there's nothing. But we know for the last 10, 15 years that, that earth plaster in France, there's no problem, not real problems to, to, to do it. There's no, nothing, no problems with insurance, there's no problem with uh, Bureau de Control, every, no, no problem. So let's do that, first of all. And the other thing about your question, I, I don't think there is one solution or the other solution. I think we must go everywhere we can, everywhere we can enter. There's no, you know, not today, okay, we want to make architecture de terre. We want architecture de terre. If there's no architecture de terre, we don't make nothing. That's not a good way, I think. It's, I think we must, yes, so if we can, we make earth plus. If we can make, uh, I don't know, interior walls with bricks, we make, Bricks. And if we can, we make PZ. Very good. But I, I don't see, I like it very good because this, it's a different approach. But when you can make this and you, you are able to, to say, I guarantee it will work. If it doesn't work, after five years, I make a new plaster. But you have to do that, I think. If not, you have a Contre example, uh, negative example, and negative examples are very dangerous. So, thank you. Um, back, just a background point. This man was selling as plaster. <laughs> this man was selling as plaster is good. <laughs> so, you, if you don't want him to sell you too much as plaster, you have to participate and say what you think about what is being said here. Thank you. Okay, so um, so maybe the situation in Germany is a little bit different. What uh, uh, he said, uh, if we reduce the plaster, is still there. So so on the end, the plaster is there and no nothing. Okay, so let's go to the next point. Um, the uh, not. Uh, easy to handle question of uh, stabilization. Um, um, for buildings like that, um, some companies they produce earthen plaster, they um, use additives like in this case cellulose materials, and um, that's um, you, you see uh, the same plaster on the left side with stabilization of cellulose, on the uh, right side um, without cellulose stabilization. And you see that this um, stabilization uh, helps the earthen plaster to be stable. And you know that we are in Germany, we have the Reinheitsgebot for the beer, that uh, you can't add something in the beer. You had you you had to use the the only some only some things, and you can't use anything. And for the earth materials, we have the same rules in Germany that um, that our um, Lehmbauregeln, what is a rule for to build with earth, is only made for earth materials without stabilization. And maybe we come in discussion about um, stabilization. What, um, is this necessary? It is acceptable, and which additives are acceptable and which not? 
I give you another example. Uh, the participants of the lecture on, at the morning, they have seen this picture. Um, this was an uh, earthen building and um, this goes back to the nature from alone by the better. And if you add, if you had add in this mixture cement or lime or something or polymer stabilization or something like that, this building will not go alone in uh, in this way. And we we like it. We are sustainable. We have a sustainable building material because we have we need no energy that the building goes this way. We need no energy uh, if we recycle the material. We can re reuse it, we can remix it. And my question is, uh, my position, my approach is that uh, uh, additives like uh, cement or lime are not acceptable for me because uh, it's uh, not reusable and uh, not it goes not this way like in this slide. Additives like the historic one, cow dung, cow shit, if you want, uh, Johannes, or cellulose, what is a, like an extract from the cow dung. Uh, it is acceptable, but because it supports the, uh, the clay minerals a little bit without that there is any changes on the clay minerals that they have no more absorption, that there's no more reversibility and so on. This is my approach. Uh, that something like that, cellulose, cow dung is acceptable. Um, and cement and lime, it's for me in our, in our area here in Europe, um, you don't need it. You have for um, you have for the fields where you apply cement stabilized earth blocks, for instance, you have better uh, material like uh, dirty concrete. What you have if you mix on earth cement, it's if you mix uh, cement on earth, make a rammed earth wall, it's for me a dirty concrete wall. Okay, discussion. Maybe if some of you have seen the, uh, I've been watching TV lastly, there was a Capital Terre speaking about earth building. Maybe if someone can speak about it, no. So I, I make a short summary of what was said. Um, in France, rammed earth and earth building techniques are not much used. In Australia, uh, they are used widely, and um, they are using heavy stabilization. They are using a lot of cement. Well, it was not said as a lot of cement, but actually, if you calculate a little, it makes as much as in a normal concrete wall, or even more. So, well, <laughs> anything? anything? Anybody? No? Jonas? Oui, vous n'êtes pas obligé de parler en anglais. Uh, I make a very clear decision with the additives. Uh, when we discussed it just before here. Um, as long as the clay can come forward with all, with all its qualities. I want. I can add whatever I want as long as it supports these qualities. If it's starting to take over and makes the clay to the one, the, to the supporting part of the mixture, then I say my work. It's not my work anymore. I, I leave it to other people who think it's meaningful. But I want. I know about uh, the qualities of clay, and I want them to be as good as possible. So whatever I add. That's the point for me. Quite easy. Um, sometimes we use in our projects also uh, cement stabilized earth blocks. If you build a school in the 
last area in Bangladesh where there's no uh, bricks available, uh, fire bricks, no uh, natural stones available, then maybe this is the best material what you can have. But if there's a natural stone uh, um, for, for the for the foundation, uh, I speak uh, for materials for foundation. Then uh, in this f um, uh, in this special field, I, I we use these cement then cement stabilized earth blocks, but only on the foundation and uh, above ground. There's a, a barrier against uprising dampness, and then it goes with normal earth blocks. Um, um, uh, the rest of the wall. So, um, if we have no other materials, then it, it is acceptable to use cement if we need this uh, behavior. But in, the, in uh, our field here, where we work in Europe, and there are uh, much better materials than uh, stabilized earth. So, my, my approach is every building material uh, where the material uh, can increase the qualities, uh, increase the qualities, and on a place where I have to stabilize the earth uh, with cement, the earth is not on the right place. It's my, it's my personal approach. Maybe about acceptance of organic stabilizers, because um, maybe even you here, um, if someone asks you if you are okay to have a plaster with cow shit in your house, would it be okay? How do you deal with this? Good. <laughs> Okay, it's um, as an answer to your to your question. It smells at the very beginning <laughs> a little bit like cow shit, and then <laughs> you uh, it smells like nothing. You don't you then don't feel it anymore. Um, I think this uh, picture fits perfectly to the, uh, what we talk about. It's a clay plaster in a bathroom, and they only put tiles on the wall where it was absolutely necessary. And it's a, since you know how it works, it's a non-stabilized um, mixture. Here is a bathtub. Um, there's a family with children, and uh, you don't see any damage of, of moisture or water uh, on the walls. Uh, it is a lot of cow manure in the in the clay plaster. It is, and it is painted with a tempera paint and um, even I myself thought it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's not possible I must say it's not possible the customer wanted it and I said okay we can try if it's not working we can always put up tiles behind the the best top and it looked after some years this picture is taken they've been living there I think for three years no 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 damages um the yeah i think that's it. the the interesting part here is uh, the special relationship clay has with with water isn't it and 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 we know about the the possibility of absorption uh, of of vapor water but how we always think the, 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 the real water, the fluid water, is dangerous if it comes as rain or if it comes from the shower or like uh, the children playing in the bathtub. We always think water is dangerous for clay, but in reality, maybe they're just good friends. It depends how you use it. Hmm? Okay, uh, usability. Um, is maybe uh, I will uh, continue the same issue like uh, like Johannes. Uh, you see an 
uh, earthen floor, and uh, it's a very nice earthen uh, floor, waxed, um, a very nice surface. You have to go without shoes on this uh, surface, and you you will feel that it's an amazing surface. And we use this surface for a um, public building for a museum. This was a old technique they used for the pl for the floor in this public building. And then um, was the opening, and everybody was good dressed. And then comes, of course, the women with the high heels, and they penetrate the floor, like you see on the right slide. And the result was uh, that um, this floor needs maintenance um, every two years. The surface layers will be completely removed, um, replaced and then waxed, um, waxed again. So um, the question behind is um, the earth materials um, are not materials for um, materials like higher, better, far, uh, stronger. Uh, we, with our clay minerals, we reach uh, strengths. This is uh, not so high, uh, not high enough for every use. And the question is, um, is the material then there on the right place? Um, or uh, have we to accept that we can't use uh, in such a building these shoes or what is the, what is the solution for um, for this yeah so the so would the solution be to to adapt well you showed something interesting uh, this afternoon about about this with um, something adapted for the shoes and like some kind of of um, shoe condom <laughs> to protect to avoid the 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 ground being destroyed. But uh, you also said that it was uh, in Germany usually uh, people were visiting the old um, castles with uh, slippers. Yeah. So just changing the way they, are, they behave normally. So is, it, is this possible uh, systematically? How is this possible with, uh, when you build with Earth? Do you have always to adapt people to the building? I think there is difference uh, between uh, adapting your, your behavior ho uh, at home and adapting your behavior in public uh, rooms at home, you you ad adapt. You adapt to, to your house. You you make a choice, and then you you go. But in public places, it's more difficult uh, to reach this uh, because there are different people with different uh, acceptance and so on, with different understanding also. Does it mean that we can only use earthen building materials in private areas? Mm -hmm. So floor is the most beansprucht, uh, uh, the most heavy usage uh, part of the building. So the abrosion is very hard, and so on. So um, for plaster, it's not so. It's not so bad for wall behind the blaster is not so bad, but um, the floor is a really high usage um, uh, apart from the building, and maybe we have to decide um, this, we overload the system on this place for a public building. 
I think we have here an interesting example where, where clay cannot meet the demand of the customer. We say, um, that what you want, I cannot, under these circumstances or in these conditions, I cannot give you the quality needed uh, to, 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 to satisfy uh, the demand. If not, like you do every two, second year, you have to repair, and it's, it's a quite high m maintenance. Maybe labor is cheap, so it's possible, but I, I, I would not, I would, I would, mm, with it, I must say. And you cannot forbid the women to walk with high heels. It's it's their choice, and 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 it's a customer's choice to to use the clay, and it doesn't fit, public or private. I think even in in private uh, uh, situations, uh, situations with private customers, we have the situation that there are unrealistic demands uh, towards the clay, uh, which we cannot we we cannot satisfy. And there we just have to be very clear and say. Uh, not possible. Uh, there are alternatives. No use. Hmm. Any comment about this? Oh, it's nice. Uh, which building does is not? Uh, it's like this: if you if you cannot repair it, huh? uh, if yes, I know. Maybe I'm wrong. But in the um, traditional earth building, the, um, the people know that uh, the building have to be repaired every ten years. And uh, do you think when we build with earth, it's um, it will be always like this, or we can find some process to make the earth uh, that we don't have any reparation to do? It's not the question only of earth. It's any building material you use. You have always the question, how is the maintenance, right? Uh, uh, materials without maintenance you, you use, it's worn out, and you throw it away, and you get a new one. Uh, uh, the, the material we work with is it needs maintenance, undeniable. Um, it's it should be um, up to a certain level, I think, acceptable, and it's good because it can get old. It grows old with we can see that with sympathy, the changing, getting old, and you can repair it, and that's good. Um, but it's not only clay; wood is just the same thing, right? It's 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 more like you see. Um, is it an acceptable maintenance, or is it too much? Uh, I think that that is a question. And where is with the border? And maybe maybe your line, your border is somewhere else for somebody else, and says, "Oh, I I, I, I love this material. I love to do something with it, so I I I'll do it. No problem." Another says, "I only want to use my house. I don't want to be do some maintenance. I just want to enjoy it." And of course, these people they. They have another demand on 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 maintenance, but I I would say don't uh, we, we have to accept them. Mm. Uh, and the most important thing is that you uh, that you discuss it before with the client. Um, if you don't do it, they, they will call you and uh, will be very worried. <laughs> And you have really problems with your insurance on something like that. You have to wrote down it before a maintenance plan. So my experience is that maintenance is much more accepted in historic buildings uh, as in modern buildings. And um, uh, we have to de uh, to define definieren. We have to define. Uh, also, what is a normal use? <laughs> and this is a, a little bit a funny question. Um, a normal use. Uh, we have sometimes uh, the problem that um, they comes with the with the chair um, on the wall on the earthen plaster wall, and of course this chair uh, will make any damages. 
on the plaster. Um, you would you will have these damages also in the gypsum plaster. Um, not so deep, but you will have uh, also in the lime plaster or something like that. But uh, um, okay, we deal with with earthen materials, and there uh, we become very early the call from the clients. There's a big damage, and this is normal use. It's normal that my children comes with a chair to the plaster. And um, also other things like if um, if there's this, um, a ceiling with earthen plaster below and the ceiling is deflecting. And is it a normal, uh, a normal thing for the earthen plaster below the ceiling that the ceiling uh, is deflecting if anybody goes there. In this case, I think yes, it's an, a normal use. Um, in this case, I think <laughs> uh, it's closer to that's not normal. If you scratch with your key on the car, there will be also, uh, you will also see something. So, um, find there the right way and to make it safe this procedure for every participant for the craftsmen for the architects and engineers and something like that it's it's really not so easy um, I think there's another interesting aspect it's about the um, if it comes to the quality uh, it's it's uh, when you say ah oh, does clay and earth needs uh, a lot of maintenance maybe it does not maybe the, the craftsman building it uh, was not so good. And he did not uh, find all the possible qualities um, in his work. Huh? So, so the maintenance is quite high, but the, and then it's very easy to blame the material, of course, uh, which usually we do, and say, oh, clay cannot do better. And I think uh, there we have to be very careful and very uh, awake. When, when we discuss this, uh, these uh, maintenance or, or, or problems or mistakes, that where is the mistake? Is it the, the, the material which says, uh, I cannot do anymore, I, uh, that's it, uh, take another material, or is it the craftsman or whatever who planned it, uh, says, oh, pff, it's, it's possible to do better, but I, I cannot do that. I don't have the qualification or the knowledge. Bonjour. Je vais dire en français, parce que quand même, tout le monde parle français quand même. Je peux hein bon. euh, Moi, je vais donner un exemple. On a fait un chantier il y a 8 ou 9 ans, un chantier de murs en pisé. Les architectes de, à Colmar, pour être très précis, pour les caves Wolfberger. Euh, donc, le, les architectes voulaient ce mur en pisé vu de l'extérieur. Les architectes étaient même intéressés que ce soit à l'intérieur, sauf qu'à l'intérieur, c'était des architectes d'intérieur qui venait d'ailleurs de Lyon, je ne me rappelle plus comment il s'appelle, ce n'est pas le, 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 le problème, dans la réunion de chantier, moi je, parce que les architectes m'ont dit, mais si, si tu peux placer des enduits en terre à l'intérieur avec eux, oui, viens avec des échantillons. Je suis venu, venu avec des échantillons. L'architecte d'intérieur, il a fait quoi Il a pris la clé de sa voiture, il l'a gratté sur l'enduit en terre. L'enduit en terre n'a pas résisté. Je dis, écoutez, on va prendre votre clé de voiture, on va ici, sur votre voiture, sur la laque de votre voiture. Est-ce qu'elle va résister Il me dit, euh, enfin, on a pas fait, avec eux, on n'a rien fait, hein, c'est clair. Mais il faut, il faut un peu voir ça. C'est pour ça que c'est vrai qu'ils ont pris des exemples un peu extrêmes. Ils ont pris l'exemple d'un sol. Ils ont pris l'exemple euh, d'enduit extérieur. Ce n'est pas forcément là où il faut avancer. C'est vrai, mais un enduit intérieur normal, n'est pas comme il l'a dit tout à l'heure, c'est aussi dur que du placo. Hein. Et tout le monde utilise du placo et personne ne prend cette clé de voiture et gratte une fois sur le placo. Mais votre placo, il est, il est aussi rayé que l'enduit en terre, sauf que l'enduit en terre, vous pouvez le réparer. Et votre placo, pour le réparer, vous refaites tout votre panneau, quasiment, pour que ça ne se voie pas. Donc c'est quand même là la différence. Oui. Voilà. <rire> Okay, uh, next uh, uh, next question. Maybe if it's 
too strong to come in discussion. Uh, we finish a little bit early and I will show you some slides from different buildings. Maybe um, we go now a little bit quicker, faster. Um, so, but the next topic uh, we can discuss, if you want, uh, is standardization. Uh, is standardization a limitation or uh, a necessity? Uh, we, uh, you know, uh, the Germans are the world championship in, uh, um, in standardization. Um, <laughs> but, and um, sorry, I'm the, um, the chairman from the standardization committee for earth and building materials in Germany. <laughs> so uh, I'm a little bit, uh, I have a, a different um, uh, a view on this topic because I see also as um, sometimes I work for the justice if anybody are in um, in, the, uh, are in the court case uh, because like here in these slides um, the plaster comes from the uh, ceiling down and in my, uh, for my instance uh, I, my position is that we uh, need uh, definite um, material behaviors for industrial earthen building products. We have many producers in Germany um, and some of them uh, produce uh, very good earth materials and some of them uh, produce bad earth materials and um, say said, oh, it's not possible to be better. Um, that's that's earth material. Um, um, but we, like uh, uh, you explain, we can reach with a very good quality, with a very good mixture, um, very good materials. And so we have to give levels, usage classes, strengths classes that we can uh, make limitations and uh, minimum strength level and so on for the products. Because if we don't have this, then uh, there will be a big trouble if you have a thing like that, that the plaster comes down. Um, uh, you, you, have no, you have no base for the discussion. If you don't have um, rules and if you don't have codes. So um, my position is that it's very important as architect, as engineer, and as craftsman um, that we have uh, rules and codes for the earthen building products. Um, by the way, these uh, new DEAN codes we, we uh, developed for the um, earthen building materials, they uh, are only for industrial products. The craftsmen, they know what they do. So um, there are very, very seldom mistakes from uh, self-mixed materials by the craftsmen. There are all these things like here are in nearly every case prefabricated products. Uh, they doesn't work. Um, this uh, picture fits very badly to standard. It's not a, a normal situation. Our, our work is uh, uh, clay plaster on, on wooden walls. Uh, very usual, but you see here that they, there was a door opening repaired, a new door opening. We're putting in a lightweight uh, uh, concrete blocks with clay mortar and plaster over there, the whole thing. This is. Um, um, a meeting of different materials in different ways with different moving, and we plaster over the whole thing. No cracks after that, uh, without a net. Um, standard would say do net. 
standard is on the safe side, and I think that's good. Uh, here we went further and and see looked what happened, and nothing happened. Um, it's the you see here the the combination of wood, uh, organic material, and 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 clay, the mineral material, which is very very uh, common in in Scandinavia, in Sweden. Here in this case, on the outside. Um, mm, this is later going to be plastered with a, a, a cover of of, uh, of lime plaster here. Um, mm, and here, this so to say, one of the last pictures. It's a it's a clay floor in in a, in a sauna, and I I want to come back to what I have been talking about before. It's the how does clay and water go together? The the Finnish sauna, like this one, is it? It's a smoke sauna. The smoke goes through the the sauna, not when the people are sitting there, just before. Um, it it is it, they use a lot of water. They splash with with, with water all around, and um, uh, it, it it takes can take it very well, very well. And, um, so here as well, uh, a, a, a quite stressed uh, situation is is uh, without uh, a normal plaster mixture without strange additives um works quite well est-ce que quelqu'un uh, veut réagir à ce qui a été montré anybody has question i'm still asking okay no okay um so um, I'm very sorry. I feel a little bit that um, it's not so easy to come in discussion about these issues. Uh, it's not uh, it's not heavy to feel it, and that's why uh, I will give you uh, a small reward for these strong minutes you had now <laughs> with me and Johannes. Uh, give you uh, on the end of the day uh, some nice pictures <laughs> uh, from the building um, we had 2004 together with the uh, Austrian architecture Anna Heringer and um, the architectural design was from Anna Heringer and our architect Eike Roswak and we make the structural calculation and um, this building is uh, awarded um, sometimes by different awards it was very successful um, um, most of the um, most of the uh, money we got for the awards we um, we give back to the buildings for the mistakes we had. <laughs> uh, also, our offices have mistakes, of course. And this is a two, two-story uh, school in Bangladesh. And the uh, base store is uh, a solid cop uh, store, and the second store is a bamboo construction. This, yeah, this uh, micro is better. And um, Bangladesh is uh, uh, one of the worst countries I know. I was in Afghanistan and everywhere, but um, Bangladesh is um, not, it's really not so easy. And everybody goes to the city. And on the uh, rural areas, there's a very poor life. But um, this life there is nah, close to the nature, and you see no. Nah, it's very basic, very basic life. But you don't see hungry people in these cities. You you see um, uh, hungry and died people. It's it's very bad. So um, this uh, our school um, we built there. 
uh, had the aim that the not so many peoples goes to these uh, very bad cities. Um, uh, we studied the uh, um, we studied the uh, local um, architecture. Which is, um, it's a uh, technique uh, similar, like COP a little, um, but uh, these buildings don't have dry shoes. They they built directly to the very wet, wet, wet uh, ground, and that's why these uh, buildings normally stay five up to ten years maximum, and uh, that's why normally the um, local architecture is uh, not any any good public. Uh, uh, any good record, uh, recognition of the public. Uh, we was looking um, to adapt good things from the local architecture like um, the roof and we add very uh, only, only some uh, new details like uh, the base which is here on this uh, school um, uh, fired bricks with uh, a thin layer of uh, concrete plaster and all, all the other parts are um, natural building materials. Oh, sorry. Um, we checked the, uh, the earth from there um, and the earth was very bad. It's only a silt not really it's not uh, there's no nearly no no clay in it and um, but from my past I know that we you if you use cop as building techniques and you use m many straw you can bind this bad silty um, silty earth together and so we got enough strength for this two-story house uh, but it uh, was only enough strength for one uh, solid earth uh, story and then, then the lightweight story on top. So for me, much more amazing was the uh, I know cup. So that's why for me the new one was a bamboo for this uh, really a, an amazing material. And we designed some elements that we add the small pieces of bamboos to structures for um, for length um, of uh, for a span of six meters for the classrooms we work there very basic um, the uh, site was not available by cars so everything was transported by um, bicycles and on your head something like that the mixture was made by the cows uh, we heard about that the good things about the cow dung. Um, so you have your uh, good additives, by the way, by the mixture. <laughs> if you prepare the mixture, uh, we use this cup technique. I explained the technique at the morning, so I will go a little bit shorter now. Um, this is a, a solid earth wall without form work, like uh, Pizet. Uh, not like uh, you. You don't need foam work. You, you cut the wall out with a with the spaten, with the spaten, with a spade. Thank you. You need a fork and a spade, and that's it. And you become these amazing surfaces and very good surfaces against weathering. The best, uh, much better than renders and earth block walls. You have these techniques uh, also in uh, French and Germany. I will go further uh, all over the world in Afghanistan. Here we have, I have seen these amazing scope walls. Uh, see this geometry. Um, it's uh, you. You can only do this by cop or also by earth block, but but it's much better than in cop. Um, back to this building, um, 
I wouldn't do such very small pillars like you see in that building as if um, 50 to 50 centimeters small pillars, what you can see in front. Um, it was, was too small for this technique. It's, Uh, was a little bit unstable, so you need uh, bigger, uh, bigger ones. Um, these are details to fix a uh, ring beam. Um, we had a bamboo ring beam on top of the walls, and these uh, 50 centimeters long uh, pieces of, uh, of bamboo, and so only 50 centimeters long, uh, are to hold the, um, the um, uh, ring beam on top of the wall that the ring beam will not slide by the wind from, from uh, the top of the wall. These are um, uh, above, the <laughs> above the windows, beams above the windows, it's bamboo um, uh, with Stro earth mixture, and then we uh, built a sample for the um, for the for the ceiling construction. It, it's uh, free fabric. No, 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 no. It was only the sample, but I uh, no, 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 no. No, it's not pre stress. It's it's built like an, a little bit like an arch, and under the self loads, it goes then. If the, f the filling comes and the floor comes, it will go straight then. Yeah. Th thank you. Merci. <laughs> so, this was our test, test field. I was a little bit younger this time. This time. Um, and the ceiling was straight. <laughs> and then the ceiling, um, I recalculate a little bit then and so on. And then the ceiling was built on site. Um, the only one machine we had uh, uh, was a drilling machine uh, with uh, 10. Uh, with 10 accus because and batteries because there was only one hour electricity every day. Uh, then the infillets of the floor of uh, cutted bamboo pieces. And then uh, we prefabricate, in this case we prefabricate, the big frame for the top story. Um, I'm a little bit proud of this. I'm a little bit proud of these details as engineers, uh, as engineer. So this uh, big frame comes on top of uh, every third um, um, bamboo piece from the ceiling. You see. Uh, you see here the bamboo piece comes out and then there are the frame on top and look uh, look how um, uh, how bent are the uh, are the bamboo pieces to build from these pieces such a frame was really not so easy I will give you a small um, a small uh, movie to see that on the end there uh, was a very nice beam we prefabricate. Um, one moment. Uh, we prefabricate this uh, oops, sorry. Um, we prefabricate it like this uh, from different small pieces, we connect these pieces. It's a little bit at the same principle like laminated wood. 
So the addition of different uh, things, and now comes the small movie, and you can see that the um, there comes out a, a big straight um, beam on the end. So the bamboo construction for me was a much more uh, challenge like the cop. I, I know the cop very good and I know it's, it works. And the bamboo was really a cha challenge for me. So uh, you see the top story. The, there you see there is a balustrade around. The balustrade is so heavy that the top story will uh, not fall down by the hurricane. So the sulfate of this wall is so big that it will uh, not take place. And these are some images from inside the uh, ground, uh, ground story. Uh, school rooms, you see the ceiling. Um, and um, of the Rückseite. On the back side are these uh, rooms where uh, the children can relax a li little bit, can uh, retreat a little bit, uh, that they can learn for they alone. Uh, it's, de it's specially designed by, by Anna Heringer. It's, um, it's, it's <clears throat> the very good design from outside it looks like this and from inside looks like that and this is a final um, slide from uh, from this uh, school and uh, we know now that this technique of COP is uh, very good for earthquake uh, hazard areas uh, COP is very uh, very good um, we, we engineers call it um, behavior after the break. So, because there's so much straw in it, so you have the straw like a fiber, and these the fibers hold the material together after the break. So it's very it's a very good material, and we use it in uh, in earthquake um, areas, uh, like here. It's um, uh, it's a, a small teaching campus in Lahore, Pakistan, uh, close to Lahore in Pakistan. Uh, we built at the moment and also in Cobb and also in Bamboo because these are regional materials, regional available materials, earthquake resistant, water resistant, and this is our way to build there. This is our approach. And this is our team. We go on site every time this team of supervisors and maybe uh, if it's possible also with uh, craftsmen to train, to teach um, on site. And you see the complete team also with the cows. Um, and um, sometimes it is a little bit dangerous in these areas we work. Uh, there's a very bad overlapping between uh, the maps of uh, areas we, we can build with earth and the maps where are traditional earthen techniques and also the map from earthquake hazard and also the map from unstable political regions so we are often we are often in situations where it's uh, not so easy to deal with the uh, um, local political situation, but we have a very good experience with local people. If you work together with local people, um, you uh, you come good together. Yes, and it's I'm very happy that we are we uh, are successful again here for this Pakistan school that we get we got. Uh, some months ago, the Holcim Award Gold. Um, the Holcim Award Gold is the um, 
um, an award for sustainable buildings and uh, and the reason why we got this prize was the new construction approach shows the rural population and affordable high quality and durable alternative alternative compared to widely used but higher cost and less environmentally compatible construction materials and uh, that true engineering uh, and design a traditional building material technology has been upgraded with effective low-tech measures that's a, the best result we can reach that anybody see in this approach i'm very happy about this and um, this gives you a uh, win from the back to continue with this uh, with these projects like in Bangladesh and like in Pakistan. So thank you for <laughs> your attention again. Um, I named that I'm oven builder and I show you very fast a few pictures of my work. Uh, maybe it's the wrong time of the year, winter is over but I will try. Uh, it's a typical oven, as you can see here, in a school. So this is the day in the school starts to make a fire in winter. Um, the shape of the oven, can there's a variation. It's, I say it's a principle. I, it's a principle of clean combustion and high quality heat through the mass. And um, it can have different shapes forms and designs here in this case it's a rammed earth wall we did that one before and then I built the oven from behind and this oven is even water coated the chimney you see here on the on the left side you see here the the water coating at the, the metal tank just behind the firebox the firebox is uh, in, 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 in fireproof uh, bricks it is built with clay mortar but it's a special mixture for which can take a higher temperature. Um, everything, oh, a big part of the design of the firebox, the size, the shape, the air intake has to do with clean combustion. Um, with that, I also got then the mass. Here you see very clearly the, the, the core, the fireproof bricks, the canal, the red bricks, and then the outer layer, the facade, is not built yet. Um, I'm not very good in making plans, drawings, so I have usually a long or a short discussion with my, with my customer, and I like to put down the bricks and say this will be the shape, and then they tell me what they like <laughs> or not, and it can vary. In this case, it will be uh, there will be three ovens and a chimney and uh, the architect was so smart to put a wooden stud in the middle of the whole thing, which I could not leave there, of course. So later the, wo the oven is load-bearing for the whole house. I, um, it can look uh, quite uh, confusing in the beginning. That's uh, the moment I like a lot. Um, the here also three fireplaces are meeting, the main load-bearing wall with shelves and working spaces and the whole kitchen will be there. And to, to put this together, I, I um, enjoy a lot. Um, it will be uh, just normal uh, heater, uh, also normal for me. And, and on the other side, there will be a baking oven and the woman with a uh, ear protection, she is working on the chimney there. The man standing, he's looking at the kitchen stove to come. Here you see two ovens back to back. The core is built and the canals are also up. I only use clay mortar all the way through, two different kinds. This one you see here, the grayish one, it's like normal clay sand mixer, which we mix ourselves, of course. The core always has another mixer. The problem here is the sand. It cannot take high temperatures. So I have to use sand which has been exposed to high temperatures before. So 
so it's not a normal send. Um, here you see the, the other side, the, you see the baking oven coming and the kitchen stove. I managed here to build three fireplaces in different sizes, but they all can take the same size of firewood, 50 centimeter. In a kitchen stove, 50 centimeter long firewood is quite interesting. Um, here, this is a baking oven. It's a commercial baking oven for bakery. This oven is 20 ton. And you can produce like 500 kilo bread per day with one fire. And you need 80 kilo wood per fire. Um, it's probably, also I'm pretty sure it's the biggest in Sweden. We build it so far two times. It's quite huge. It's uh, the fire chamber is almost two and a half meter deep. Um, this is uh, the little brother, so to say, it's only 16 ton. Here it's built on the outside of the building. We just made a hole in the wall, and that's where you have the, the doors. I am very good friends with many bakers in, in all over Sweden, so when I travel, I only know, always know where to buy my bread. Um, for, the, for the more modest use for the private use, so to say, I, I, there's also a smaller, um, uh, smaller possibilities. This is uh, very nice for, 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 for a house, for private, um, and it warms up the house as well. So I have two functions, bread baking, or baking, and heating up the house. It's back-to-back uh, -back with this oven. They're like good friends. They give heat to each other, but they are totally independent uh, fireplaces built in the same body, so to say. Um, I want to finish with this picture. And um, the reason, uh, there's a reason. <laughs> uh, I think that the, the dog is looking backwards. Uh, and I think that's how we should, that's how we should look at our clients. We, 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 we focus on the people sitting in front of the oven and not the oven. It's very easy that you get so uh, absorbed by the house you're building or the oven you're building that you almost forget who is the client and that the client is the most important. So I really want to say with all our talk about techniques and all this, I still want to say that we need to focus on the people living in the house. Thank you. Only one question from my side. Um, the buildings we build normally, they uh, nearly need nothing energy for using um, because they transmit nearly no energy through the walls because they are thick, isolated with natural uh, building uh, isolation materials like uh, hemp or something like that. Uh, why I need then such a big, nice oven. I don't like this question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I don't like uh, zero energy houses. <laughs> but um, it's true. If you have a house like this, um, who does not need much energy, my ovens don't fit. It's true. Um, I have never been in one of these houses, so I don't know how it feels to be like that. I like to know where the heat comes from. I don't like the anonymous heat, let's say floor heating everywhere. It's warm everywhere. It's not cold anywhere. I don't have variations. I like um, a center somewhere where the heat comes from. And then I have different uh, areas with different temperatures, so I can choose because I cannot, I cannot switch off this oven. The oven gives heat all the time. I make a fire one time a day. It gives heat all day, 24 hours. I make the next fire. The fire of the day is the heat for tomorrow because of all the thermal mass. So the heat is going on, but I feel, 
I don't, I'm, let's say I'm happy, I'm active, I don't need so much heat, so I find a place further away from the oven, or maybe I need more heat, I go closer to the oven, so I can choose and that idea I like, and I, I, if, if I'm in a house where, where it is warm everywhere the same, I'm pretty sure I would not feel comfortable. But it's the choice of each customer to choose a house type or house construction where a heater is needed. What I think in with the heaters, I have to come with good qualities, which is clean combustion and high heat heat quality, which means radiation heat. That is very important for me. Oh. Yeah, I have built some ovens here in France as well, by the way. The proud of owner of one is sitting over there. Thank you. Um, maybe a quick word as conclusion. It looks like um, several aspects uh, that have been discussed are uh, stressing the point that living in an earth building is not a standard way of living. Unfortunately, yeah. Well, anyway. <laughs> uh, I go back to French for the end. Uh, donc, merci à tous d'être restés uh, jusqu'au bout. Uh, merci. <laughs> uh, merci à l'école d'architecture aussi d'avoir permis uh, cette discussion. Et bonne soirée. <laughs>